Bro, was that sprinkles? Mm -hmm. I just know that if I want to do my best and perform my best, okay. I need to start off the day right. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. A while back I did a video on how to lay out a building and I want to do one that's not just about laying out a building but also laying out anything. You know, you might be laying out a deck, a patio, you might be looking to put a driveway in. Whatever it is, if you want to accurately lay it out with good dimensions and square up the corners and the walls, that's what this video is going to be for. I'm going to hopefully show you the techniques that we use to do it efficiently and effectively. So behind me, we have a 60 by 64 building. This is a shop we're going to build. So it's a basic square, but it doesn't matter. Once you know how to square up a square, make it accurate, you can add other, you know, dimensions to it, an L shape, a T shape, whatever that is. So let's go ahead, let's get the tools we need to do this, and then we'll get into the process of how we lay it out and make it accurate. Greg, you're ready to go, aren't you? Yep. Getting fueled up by them Casey's Donuts? Yep. All right, man, we need, uh, we need our sledgehammer for jet stakes. We need jet stakes. We're only gonna need a couple jet stakes, right, Greg? Maybe the other corner too, you think? Um, I didn't really pay attention. Four, might be getting away with four. I think we'll, I think we'll get away with four. I want to know why every time you need a bit, it's always the one on the bottom. That's what I want to know. All right, so before we get started with the process, these are the things that we're going to use. We've got sledgehammer, obviously to, to pound in our jet stakes. That's what these are. And I know already that I'm not going to be able to use only jet stakes because we're working on a fairly soft gravel pad that has about three foot of gravel back there. So what we're going to do is we're gonna use the circular saw. We're gonna cut a nice angle on these wooden jet stakes, which you can do if you don't wanna go out and buy these because you're only doing one or two projects. And we'll use these as jet stakes as well. And then we've got our batter boards. Batter boards, you will see they are used to hook our strings to, which that's one thing I forgot. Greg, you wanna grab some string line? Yep. Awesome. And then we've got our trusty tape measures. Um, I would recommend typically whenever you're doing dimensional things it's nice to have two good steel tape measures okay you don't want those cheap vinyl tape measures or whatever the material is you want a good steel one and the reason that is is because when you're pulling longer dimensions if you're not using steel you can get stretch now the only problem with steel is if you're working in extreme heat you can have expansion the most important thing though is that you work with something consistently because at the end of the day uh, when trying to square something up, as long as you're doing uh, your measurements with a consistent tape and not switching tapes between a vinyl or a or coated tape or a uh, fiberglass tape or a steel tape, you want to be consistent. So that's what we've got. Now let's go ahead. And what we like to do is on a site like this, we like to get a rough idea where our corners are because the, the gravel looks nice and square and it looks to be accurate, but we want to go ahead and find out what the size of the pad is so that we can build our site or our building on the center of the site. Uh, actually, we're gonna try and push it close this way, Greg. We wanna be as close to this high ground so we are not digging through as much gravel as possible. So let's go ahead and start with that. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and check the rough dimensions of our site um, just to make sure we know what we're working with. This dimension right here is supposed to be a 64 foot dimension. And good thing, Greg, we're 64 here. So if we hug that, we'll, we'll be a little bit closer here. But obviously, we're going to want to probably bring it this way just a little bit. Let's go ahead and I'll check this one. That's like 60, almost 65. Yeah. All right, so I think we're probably pretty good, man. I don't think we need to check any more. No, we, we're going we're gonna to hug up here. We'll keep it off this way just a little bit. Hey, guys, the nice thing is is that we're kind of out here in the middle of the world. We actually don't have a whole lot that we need to square up to or to run parallel to, or we don't have any setback issues where we have to measure off of. But let's take a minute real quick and talk about if you're needing to line up with something, what you're gonna to wanna to do is establish a line, okay? Let's say there's a house over here behind us and we want to be parallel with it. You're gonna to wanna to measure off and stay consistently those dimensions off of that house for your starting point. Now that line becomes your control point, right? So let's let's kind of simulate that, Greg, because this is our this is kind of our control point here, right? 
we want to stay close on this edge here, we're gonna have pretty easy digging down this whole line. And let's come in just a couple feet, right? So maybe something like so. All right. So what I would do is if I was building and trying to build parallel to something, I would get a measurement from that pin that we set to whatever we're paralleling up against. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna pull my tape to the same line that we measured so that it is accurate and equal between the two. But since we don't have that, we can kind of just eyeball it and it's gonna be just fine. All right, now when you're laying out a building, in order to get square, we've all heard, or we should have, because we've gone through school, we've heard of the Pythagorean theorem. We know about right triangles and how, uh, if you know A squared, B squared, and C squared, and they equal each other, then you know that it's gonna be square. Well, I like to use my phone because it has a calculator app and it makes it super easy. So what we're dealing with is a dimension of this building, which is 63 foot nine inch and 59 foot nine inch. Okay, the reason we're not doing even footage is because this is our post layout that we're doing. Um, you're gonna wanna use whatever the dimensions of the foundation that you are working with, right? And then that's gonna give me a diagonal of 87, four and a half. What that means is right now, we've got our first line established. We know it's 63, nine. So when I go from the same point on a diagonal and Greg hooks that nail that we set at 63, nine, he's gonna come over to me at 59, nine and my diagonal should be, I already forgot, 87, four and a half plus two inches. We don't wanna over pull these things. I'm looking for 86 and a half or 87, six and a half. No way, we are, we're pretty good here, Greg. Yeah, we're not gonna be way back on this corner. Okay, so we're gonna give a nice little taut pole. We're gonna find 59, nine, that's this dimension. And we're gonna find 87, six and a half. No, 80, 87, four and a half plus two inches. So 87, six and a half. Greg's always looking out for me, man. I love that guy. He really does care about me doing good work. Even though sometimes I think he, he would rather me mess up so he can just give me a hard time and make fun of me, but. Good job, buddy, you're doing good over there. Okay, so now we're gonna take our 12 inch GRK just cause it's a nice long fastener. And we're just gonna set this right where these two tape measures intercept. Now, whenever laying out a foundation, we're gonna be digging holes, we're gonna be pouring concrete. This is just to get us in the very close proximity so that we can dig an accurate hole, but we will actually do this whole process again when it is time to set our brackets, and we'll also do it uh, when we get our batter boards up. So, Greg, wanna go to that corner and I'll just wind this up? We now have three corners established. I'm gonna do the same thing, holding on to the same established line that we started with, right? That is the most important thing. That line that we started with is one that we will never change. It stays put. The only thing that moves are these two corners over here. So we're gonna be looking for 59.9. And I can already tell my pile of tools that I brought out are probably gonna be in the way. And I'm looking for 87, six and a half. 87, six and a half. 59.9, see how loose this is? The edge is very loose. This is why we wanna stay off these edges as much as possible. Um, 87, six and a half, 59, nine inches. Make sure we're snug. And boom, so now we have determined where the four corners are. And if we didn't like this, we can actually, and I'm, Greg, how far are you from the, uh, the south wall there? Here, yeah. Probably foot, foot, foot. I'm, I'm getting pretty close over here, but I think it's gonna be okay. We have our four corners. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up our batter board. So this is just a, this is a reference point to know where we're gonna set up our batter boards because that is where all the accuracy and I think work is to be done to make sure that you have 
a very nice and square and accurate foundation. So let's go ahead and get our batter board set up. All right, here's a little tip for you guys when you're doing this and you set your pins, you walk away, you come back and you're like, where the heck is that thing? I can't even find it. Just hit it with some nice orange paint. You're gonna be using this anyway, so. Okay, so what we just did, guys, was laid out a very rough but accurate square, okay? Now, that's not what we're gonna build to. We're not gonna build to those pins. We actually need something that we can set our brackets to because we're gonna be digging piers. Um, and, and if you're at home and you're gonna be doing a deck, you need to be able to have something to, to set your post to that you're gonna be building your deck on, um, or maybe even a foundation, whatever. Whatever you're forming up or building next to, you need something accurate. And that's where the batter boards come in with a string line. Because strings, as long as it's not windy, they're always gonna be pulled tight and straight. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna give ourselves the exact thing that we're gonna build to, and it's, that is where the accuracy really will come into play. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so before we set up our batter boards, it's important to note that if your, if your site is sloped, does not have a very consistent grade to it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you, when you get to the point of your batter boards, you're gonna want your batter board set on a level plane. Otherwise, as you can imagine, if one corner is here, one corner is here, the other one's over here, when you do your dimensions, when you do your square, it will be, it needs to all be in the same plane, otherwise it's not accurate. So what we like to do is just go ahead and we'll set up our rotary. We'll just double check to make sure that the pad is pretty good, but for us, it just makes sense because we're gonna be doing this once. We're gonna set our batter boards to a laser. So I'm just gonna find about what is the laser measurement, okay? We're just gonna lock this, oops, I moved it. What I'm doing is I'm just gonna check four corners very quickly just to see how close we are so I know where to put my batter boards. Okay, you can see this corner's three inches lower than that front corner. Same thing, two, three inches lower than the first corner. And our final corner, half inch maybe. So what that means is that we can set our, our batter boards pretty close to this ground, and we're not gonna have any that, if we set them all, like let's just assume that we go to a low corner and we set our batter board close to the ground. Now we go to a high corner and we can't get our batter board low enough. So hopefully that makes sense. We wanna find the high point and then we can always bring a batter board up. We can't go into the ground. So Greg, let's go ahead and start here. This was basically our highest corner. And what we've got is a simple two by. It's just scrap lumber, it doesn't really matter. And this is something that, um, I've seen a lot of guys do batter boards different ways. There's even some products you can go out and buy that specifically are batter board products. Uh, we're pretty simple here. So I've seen guys use this, this method where they take one board, let me just show you. Greg, have you ever seen this? You know what I'm gonna do? You're so smart, dude. Okay, I've seen this a lot. We got a string line that's gonna go all the way down there. So they set up a batter board. Then we're gonna have a string line that's gonna go this way. So then they come in and they set up another batter board. That requires one, two, three, four jet stakes, two boards, or what you can do is take your board, come back here, set it on an angle. We're gonna set a jet stake here, a jet stake here. Now, this string goes here, this string goes there. We're gonna make sure that this is installed level with the rotary laser so that our string lines will be perfect to each other. So this is a tip, I think it saves time, it saves effort, which as a business owner, saves money. All right, Greg, let's do this, buddy. You got that big sledge? So we gotta drive this at least down far enough to get our uh, a screw through these uh, jet stakes. I bought these off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below because these were a little bit tricky to find. And uh, if somebody's looking for some extra long jet stakes, uh, I think I bought a 10 pack. Keep going, big dog. So next thing we're gonna do is, really this is kind of uh, 
what would you say, Greg? It's kind of not relevant 100%. We're just going to guesstimate about a height where we're above our tubes, which we know we're going to be as close to this gravel here. This is a high point. This is our high point? Okay. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just set this first one pretty low. A couple inches off the ground. All right, then we're going to set this grade stick. Now this is super easy. Now that we have this set, Greg can hold this. Here, you wanna hold this? He can get my other side of my uh, batter board perfectly level. Now this batter board is level, so when we put these string lines uh, from, uh, you know, from both sides and they intersect, this is important because if your batter board is not level, then your strings will either be pushing on one each other or can be off. So now, Greg, let's go to the next corner. We'll do the same process four times and get all of our corners established with a single batter board and two jet stakes. But I know also we've got a little bit of something to do when we get into this really tall gravel and these metal jet stakes are probably not gonna work. Mm. So, this is where we start to potentially have a, an issue because I don't have solid ground maybe deep enough or shallow enough, I should say. So, Greg, bring that over here. Let's double check it. I don't want to drive it too deep. We got to make sure that we can mount this. See, that's not very solid. That's not, very solid. That's not solid enough. So these jet stakes, trash. We need to do something different. What we've got are some wooden scrap lumber. These are actually uh, just like delivery boards. They get put underneath our pile. Let's go ahead and put a nice little point on it. All right, big dog, bring that sledge in here. Okay. <laughs> I'll just push it down. Okay, now go. All right, how far do you want to go? Let's, uh, here, I'll just hold this. Yeah, you can go ahead and go down another about here. So the wood is a lot more stable. Because of its size, it grabs a lot better and we can make these like any length we want. All right, that'll work, Greg. This one seemed to be good. Yeah, let's go ahead and switch it out, what it is. Okay, the other thing is you don't want these to be in the way of your line. So wherever this line's coming through, make sure you don't have your stakes in that position. Okay, so that's two ways of doing a batter board with either some manufactured jet stakes or if you don't own them, just grab a couple pieces of scrap lumber, put a point on them, drive them in, just as easy. All right, so two down, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the next two, and then we'll go to the next step, which is getting our string lines up. Good and strong. Greg, I'm really proud of you, man. Four. You haven't hit me once. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> okay. All right, now that we have our batter boards all done, we got our four corners defined by these nice screws, it's time to set up our string lines. So uh, we're gonna go back to our control line, the one that we deemed the most important. That is the one we're gonna lay out first. All right, so what we're gonna do is take our string line. Greg's gonna run down to that end, and I'm gonna stay here on this end. And we're gonna use these screws that we set into the ground, marked them with paint, and that's gonna be what we set this first string line off of. And we're just gonna eyeball over top of it. Greg, are you pretty good? Okay, so we're just gonna mark a line on this uh, batter board where I visually see the string line over top. Now, we're, we don't need exact precision off of anything, but I can promise you if you do this, and you have any sort of skill looking at something and lining up a string to it, you're gonna be good enough. But if you have to be exactly a certain dimension, like let's say you're building off of a road and you have to have a setback of 60 feet off of a center line of a road, this now is when you're going to need to measure from this string line, this point, 
to the center of the road. And you would actually do it right here on the batter board. You would make a mark where that 60 foot is, and that is where you're gonna set your string line. But for Greg and I, we can eyeball this and get a good control line established. Okay, Greg, you got an end, right? Yep. Yeah, go ahead and set your nail. And so we're just gonna, we're gonna put a little fancy knot on this string so that we can remove it later. And man, I actually, I just thought about that. I haven't done it in so long. I hope I still know how to do it. Okay, Greg's got his tight. We're just gonna kind of get back here where we think we can pull this and have some tension. And we're gonna make a knot. Now you're probably like, what just happened, Kyle? Well, I made a, I made a nice loop that I can put on the nail. And when I'm done with it, I can just do this. Okay, now Greg and I have always gone back and forth on how to do this, but I think I've learned his way because it's the, best way. it's the best way. Flip your hand over, pull the loop through. Boom, boom, done. Okay, so now that we have this done, we need to get the marks over on those better boards for our parallel lines. So Greg, what I'm gonna do is give you this end and I'm gonna go mark 53.9 on these batter boards. So you heard Greg is gonna burn me a foot. It's an important technique, I think, for accuracy because it's hard to hold a tape at the end, but it's very easy to hold it with a little bit of tape on both hands and reading a one foot measurement in the middle. What it means for me is instead of going 59.9, I'm actually looking for 60 foot nine. So that is him burning, burning a uh, foot. You good, Greg? So now I'm just gonna come over to my batter board and I'm gonna mark 60 foot nine. Now we're gonna go down and we're gonna do the same thing on the other end. Tell me when you're good. Yeah. So now that we have these marks established, this is our parallel line to our control line. So we're gonna set a string line up on these two marks. Same way. Greg, I got the string here, buddy, if you wanna take it. And this is just some simple mason line, so it's nothing, nothing fancy, and it looks like somebody, probably me, I don't know what just happened, but we've got a mess. Oh yeah, there we go, there it is. Two hours later. Okay, so now that we have this, we kinda need to establish a line perpendicular and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go over top of our, uh, our screw lines. Um, and then we will have something to start measuring to. I hope I got enough string on this one. What the heck? That's a little bit sus. That's probably gonna break. So we're gonna do a square knot, Greg. Square knot, it's the Boy Scout knot. And it's great for joining two pieces together. You know, I was an Eagle Scout, so I know all the knots. Actually, I don't remember any of them, just a couple. Huh? Your knot? Timber hitch. I love the timber hitch, man. I used to like to lash and build forts, yeah. so the timber hitch was just money, man. It's great. We're gonna find out real quick when we start pulling a diagonal dimension. That's gonna tell us how close to square we are. Because dimensionally, these are accurate dimensions, we just measured them. But whether or not they're actually square, that's a different story. So we got our string set, supposedly in the right spot, but we got something going on here uh, with this pin. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check everything because remember these initial pins that we set, it was just, a, it was just to get us close so we could put our batter boards up. 87, four and a half. So we've got accurate dimensions, 63.9 and 59.9. That's what we want our four sides to measure out to be. But you're not square if you have four equal sides. You need to also have a diagonal. And this is where the Pythagorean theorem comes in. So Greg's gonna burn me a foot. I haven't looked yet. We're looking for 88, four and a half. So we're at 88, three and a half, okay? What that means is that this, this point and that point are kind of squashed together. And these points, when we measure them, my guess is gonna be that we're gonna be, let's check it, Greg, is we're gonna be, yeah, go ahead and go down there. We're gonna be an inch long in this dimension. 
And yes, we are 88, five and a half. So what we need to do, this is actually quite simple. We need to squash this dimension and we need to extend that dimension. So the easiest way to do it, because that's our control line over there, the first line that we started with, you wouldn't want to move it. We need to shift this, this point and that point need to shift over. So we're taking it from like a parallelogram to a square. So Greg, come on down here. And we need to, we need to move them in equal distances. So we can't move one without moving the other. Otherwise our dimensions change. So uh, we need a full inch, but that's a little bit more, Greg. Let's go inch and a half. Yeah. Yeah, an inch on a diagonal, actually. Inch and a 16th would be mathematically what we'd need to move, Greg. Yep. So we're gonna move this an inch and a 16th towards Greg. And this is another little, well, if I could get this nail off, something that we never do is we don't, we don't leave nails in the wood because then when we take these off later, and I'm gonna do this now because this, this knot slipped on Greg, but you never wanna leave a bunch of nails in the batter board because then you get confused where you're supposed to be. So we'll let Greg move his and then we'll recheck this dimension that we moved as well as the diagonal. All right, I'm gonna draw this for you guys real quick just so it's clear and understandable, okay? We've got a rectangular building, all right? 63, nine, 59, nine. That's what I wanted. When we pulled this diagonal, we were an inch shy of what we wanted. And when we pulled this diagonal, we were an inch longer, which means I was actually like a parallelogram. So what we did was we took this point and this point and we shifted them over in order to try to square up the building. So hopefully that makes sense. The diagonal is literally the key to everything. You can have accurate dimensions as you just saw we did without it being square. So that's the important thing. I'm gonna go back. Greg and I are gonna check these dimensions and check the square again. And hopefully we are, if not perfect, extremely close. So what I did was, this is the original location, and this point right here was an inch longer on the diagonal than what we wanted. So by shifting this line over the inch and a 16th, which mathematically is gonna reduce my diagonal by an inch, uh, that is what we did. We shifted this line over as well as the same parallel line on the other side. So we don't wanna change the dimension of the wall, we only want to shift it in basically bringing it back to square, hopefully. So, Greg, you ready? Let's see what we got. Greg's gonna burn me a foot. We wanna be at 88, four and a half. So look at that. See that? 88, four and a half. Now I can push and pull a little bit and it might not be, depending on the wind, depending on how hard I'm pulling, if there's any stretch. If I'm snug and I'm at 84 and a half, I'm good. Greg, let's check this dimension, make sure we stayed in 63.9. We are at the end of the day building a structure, a large structure. If we are within a 30 second of this process, we're probably good. But you have to remember guys that literally as we, as we do every stage of a build, the further away from perfection we are, the harder it is on the next step. So if we're not as close to square as possible at the bottom, there ain't no way we're gonna get to that roof and put on our steel with a square roof that doesn't have jags in it and that doesn't you know, have, have to rip a piece of steel from something to nothing at the top because it's out of square. Literally, this is the most important part of the build. So there you go, 64.9. That's the dimension we needed to stay. And now Greg's gonna stay there and we're gonna confirm our 87, four and a half on the other diagonal. And if this is good, we just did a perfect layout and we are ready to start digging a foundation. So cross your fingers, drum roll please. And we are not great. We are about three eighths of an inch off. So right here, okay, four and an eighth, not four and a half. What that means, and this is good because if we were just pulling tapes perfectly, you guys would be like, dude, I didn't learn anything. I just seen you do a perfect layout. It means we have a bad dimension. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna check the other dimensions we haven't checked because something is off. Okay, Greg, no, I need you to go that way a quarter. 
Yeah. Okay, I think we found our culprit, hopefully. This dimension, and so what can happen is these strings have tension on them, okay? Uh, there could be some movement in this batter board that kind of as it sits there gets a little bit of tension, and this dimension on this back wall is only at 60, well, 59, eight and three quarters. We want it 59, nine. So by making this a little bit bigger, we should see an increase in our diagonal, which hopefully will bring us to square. But it's good to have a little bit of problems because then you guys can see how it's solved versus everything just being perfect. It is great for us when we set these pins in the ground, come through, put our batter boards up, set our strings, and it's like, ah, we're good. Let's start building. But that doesn't teach anything. So let's try it again, Greg. I gotta be honest, guys, an eighth of an inch is not something that I'm gonna worry too much about if this one's good and our dimensions are all good because it can literally, eighth inch on a diagonal on this size is not gonna change anything. E8, four and a half. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, it's not worth fighting an eighth of an inch. If you really wanted to get that particular because you're building a cabinet, then you would want to adjust these once again and find a little bit, but for us, if we are an eighth inch out of square on 60 feet, the world's gonna keep turning, everything's gonna be just fine. So, guys, this is a layout video. This doesn't matter if it's a building, if we're doing a post frame, if we're doing a deck, if we're putting a patio in, doing a driveway. If you want square uh, corners, you want a straight building, you want everything to be good, you gotta start with a good foundation. And these are tips and techniques that we use to ensure that the start of our building is as good as possible for our clients. So I hope this helps you guys. Uh, if there's something that didn't quite make sense, drop it down below in the comments and I'll try to answer that. Maybe a follow-up video or something in the future that I can do. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned as we get on this project, start building it, and I'm sure there'll be a lot more content. But Greg and I, we're gonna start digging holes, but that's for another time in another video, guys. So we'll catch you on the next one. If you guys just wanted to know how to do a layout the video hopefully was enough for you, but to understand why we do this and what we're doing, I'm just gonna lay my tape out now on this string line, and I'm looking to lay out all my post locations. Now this would be like if you're doing a deck and you need all of your deck posts spaced out. What I can do now, Greg, are you burning a foot or are you holding exact? exact? Okay, so Greg's holding exact, which means I need a post 55, 10 and a half. I need a post at 40, seven, ten and a half, because I'm setting my post every eight foot. So what I can do is come in, I can mark out my post spacing. Then what I've got is a string line that marks the outside of my building. So when I go to dig a pier, a concrete pier to put my post here, if I center my hole on this X, when I come in and set my post up against the string line, I'm going to be good. So I just wanted to add a little bit of context as to what you do once you have all these string lines up, well, then you start laying out where all your foundation points are. Maybe right here, I'm gonna have an L shape that comes out, a little bonus room or something. I can mark it and I can tee off of this point right here. So we just did the basic, we laid everything out, showed you the basics, and now you can go from there and maybe that'll be in another video, some more complicated layout work. But anyway, we're gonna keep going, guys. Have a good one, it's time to get to work.